If you've ever deployed a USB rubber ducky payload on a DigiSpark against a macOS computer, you might be frustrated to find out that it simply doesn't work. Today, we'll write macOS payloads for the tiny $1 DigiSpark on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While the DigiSpark is a suspicious looking device that costs only $1 and doesn't fully replace a USB rubber ducky, it is a great way of getting started writing your own ducky scripts unless you're going after a macOS system. Now this is because when you plug this in, Mac will immediately launch a keyboard profiler, and this will completely derail any ducky script that you've written, and again this also happens a little bit intermittently so you can't always count on it happening as well. This is incredibly frustrating because you can't just simply port over an existing script to a macOS computer, even if the majority of it would work on a macOS system. Now today, we're going to dive into the hardware behind this and find out what we need to do to change this to look like an Apple device. So when we plug it in, the macOS computer instantly accepts it and allows us to execute our ducky script payload. We'll also go over some macOS hotkeys so we can make sure to make our script as efficient as possible so we can jump into a terminal window and start doing bad stuff. Now in order to do this, you'll need a macOS computer to practice on and a $1 DigiSpark, guess which one's more expensive, and after that we should be ready to go once you have Arduino IDE installed. Once you have that installed and updated, then we can begin. In order to start writing ducky scripts for a macOS computer, we're going to need to consider a couple of the little differences that can make it frustrating when trying to adapt an existing script. First, if you want to get into a terminal window, the fastest way to do it is to press the GUI key and a space, which opens up the spotlight search, after which we can type in whatever application we want and then return in order to open it. Now obviously opening a terminal window and typing in a bunch of malicious commands is almost definitely the fastest way to start messing up a Mac computer. So that's what we're going to do in the beginning of our command so that we can actually get into somewhere that we can do some damage. Next in our payload, we're just going to run a netcat listener, which will allow us to do, in this case, just some obnoxious stuff over the network. But if we were trying to do something more malicious, this is where we would put a Python script or a netcat something else that would do something a little bit worse than what we're going to do today. Now, finally, we're going to press enter, which will basically run the netcat shell we're running. And that's really it for the payload that we're going to do today. The tricky part is going to be getting this to run, because right now, if we plug in the DigiSpark and we haven't done any other setup, nothing will happen. It won't upload, and unfortunately, because we don't have the board installed, we won't be able to really do much. So the first step for this will be to actually add the board. And an easy way to do that is to go to the DigiStump wiki, which has the JSON link that you need right here. Go ahead and copy this, and then in Arduino, you can go into the Preferences section, go to the Additional Board Manager, go ahead and paste in the JSON link, and click OK in order to add the DigiSpark boards to the index. Now in order to select it, we'll click on Tools, go to Board and Board Manager, and as soon as the board index finishes loading, we'll type in DigiSpark to locate the DigiStump AVR boards. And when we click on it, we can go ahead and click on Install. And that should do everything we need to do to use the DigiSpark board within Arduino. But we're not done. Because while we can write this, we can't exactly run it on a macOS computer because it won't recognize the keyboard by default. It's going to see it as some off-brand keyboard and immediately try to interrogate it and figure out what kind of brand it is. And that means launching a utility that's very annoying to try to plan around. Now we can basically uh, completely avoid the situation by changing the hardware to make it look like an, an Apple device so that an Apple computer will just instantly accept it and not ask any questions that we don't want to answer. So let's go ahead and actually change that by accessing a variable in a configuration file called usbconfig.h. Now I'll make sure to post this in the Nullbyte article linked in the description, but if we go to a terminal window, we should be able to type nano and then press return. And we'll need to scroll all the way down to a part that describes the vendor. So the field we are looking for is kind of a ways down here. 
under device description, we're looking for a USB config vendor ID. So we need to make this value read 0xAC, 0x05, which is the correct ID for an Apple device. And when you're done, you can press Control X and then Y and then return, and it will go ahead and save this. Now, another way you can learn a little bit more about these Ducky scripts is by taking a look in the same way by typing nano and then the location of the digikeyboard.h library, taking a look at the various keys we have to work with when we are writing these Ducky scripts. They are all documented here, and this is a great way to kind of refresh yourself and know what's available when you're writing your own. So I encourage you to check this out so you know all the available keys you, that you can press. Now, once you're done with that, we should actually be ready to put this on our, uh, on our uh, DigiSpark. And I'll show you how it's a little bit different because first we'll need to verify the scripts, we'll need to press upload, and then, and only then, we can plug this in. Because up until uh, now, basically, uh, it only listens for about five seconds when it starts up for the bootloader to load it. There you go. You can see I'll pull it out. It's 100% uh, complete and it's erased the existing payload, uploaded a new one, and we're done. So again, you can't just leave this in because it only listens for the first five seconds. So you have to press the upload button, wait for a second, plug this in, and then it'll go ahead and send the payload to the DigiSpark board. This is unlike another Arduino, which is always listening for you to send a payload. So keep that in mind when you're doing it, or this can get kind of frustrating if you don't figure out why it's not working. Now let's go ahead and see what we're gonna do with our uh, little budget rubber ducky. We'll plug this in and see if we can get an interesting result on our payload. Let's see what happens. Whoa, and there you have it. A bunch of bad network stuff and a frozen computer. While it might initially seem like macOS computers are invulnerable to ducky scripts, it turns out with a small modification, that's just not true. Instead, it's easy to use one of these $1 microcontrollers to write ducky script for macOS. So if you're using a macOS computer, you should be very afraid if you see one of these sticking out of your computer when you come back from the restroom. Now one thing to keep in mind is that most modern Mac, Mac OS computers actually use USB Type-C, so you would need to get some sort of adapter in order to use this on a newer Mac computer. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you get stuck on any of these steps, you can always check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter, at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.